Okay, so in this problem we're looking at a two-dimensional um, problem that takes the form of projectile motion. So this is a, a pretty tricky sort of challenging problem from chapter 3 of Jung and Friedman. And it's, uh, it's question 359. So the snowball rolls off a barn roof that slopes downwards at an angle of 40 degrees and it's 14 meters above the ground and it has an initial speed of 7 meters per second as it rolls off the roof. So we're ignoring air resistance and we're trying to figure out how far from the edge of the barn the snowball strikes the ground if it doesn't hit anything else while it's falling. Um, draw position versus time um, in the x and y directions, velocity versus time in the x direction and velocity versus time in the y direction for the motion in part a. And then lastly, we want to figure out if a man is uh, 1.9 meters tall and standing 4 meters from the edge of the barn, is the snowball going to hit him? So this is, you know, a, a, a bit of a twist on a standard projectile problem. So let's see if we can get stuck into this one and um, and solve it. So that's, as always, first of all, we draw a diagram. So, whoops, try and get rid of this. So we're over here. This is our, uh, why isn't this working? Put on the pen. Should be working. Still not working. Ah, yes, sorry, I was in the wrong place. So this is our roof. This is our point where the ball is going to roll off it. And this is our drop to the ground. And then our person is out here, four meters away. So the snowball is here. So for this problem, and again, you know, you're free to choose where y equals zero is, where x equals zero is. And I suppose doing that, you know, or, or figuring out where to choose your x and y equals zero just comes with practice doing these questions. So turns out that, you know, in terms of the maths, it's just a little bit simpler to choose y equals zero at this point and then have y uh, positive falling towards the ground. And, it, and as I said, you can do it either way, but in this case, it's just a little bit easier later on to, to, to set things up that way. So the ball's going to roll off, it's going to fall down, and we need to figure out a couple of things about that. So if we go back to the question here, the first thing we want to find out is how far from the edge of the barn does the ball strike the ground if it doesn't hit anything else? So what we're asking for there, or what we're trying to figure out is, we're going to make this smaller, there we go. We're trying to figure out, you know, how far out in this direction does the ball hit the ground? So in all of these projectile problems, it's, it, it turns out that it's useful to try and figure out how far the ball, or sorry, how long the ball is in the air for. Let's just call it a ball in this case. And to do that, we need to analyze the Y motion. So the only acceleration you're ever likely to see in a projectile problem is acceleration due to gravity. And that's only in the Y direction. There's no acceleration in the X direction. So we'll specifically write out again. So we're letting the plus Y uh, direction be downwards. And what that tells us then is, well, first of all, we've got no uh, x acceleration, so the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. And you know, even if you know this pretty well, and you've done lots of uh, projectile problems, it's no harm to write this down and remind yourself. And a y, the acceleration in the y direction, then because we've chosen downwards as the positive direction, the acceleration downwards or the acceleration in the plus y direction is nine point eight zero uh, meters per second. It's also going to come in handy to know what the velocity in the accelerate uh, in the x direction is. So, th th what's the velocity in the x direction? And that's going to be given by we're going to need to do a little bit of trigonometry based on the fact that this angle here is forty degrees that I've just filled in here. So this angle here is forty degrees. So v naught x, the velocity, the initial velocity in the x direction, which as it turns out is going to be equal to the final velocity because there's no acceleration in the x direction. Remember is going to be equal to v naught times the cosine of theta, uh, and that's going to be equal to 5.36 meters uh, per second. So we've got a 40 degree angle here. This is our theta. So the uh, x component of the velocity, the initial velocity, is going to be v naught cosine theta, and that's 5.36 meters per second. We could do the same thing for the y direction as well because we're going to need that. So V naught in the y direction. And now V naught in the y direction, you know, or sorry, the velocity in the y direction is going to change. So we do have a, uh, a y acceleration. So 
the v, vy is going to change vx isn't going to change because we've no x component of the acceleration so the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be v naught times the sine of theta and that's going to come out at 4.50 meters per second so our initial velocities are going to be x component what did we say 5.36 meters per second and then the y component is going to be 4.50 meters per second whoops ran out of space okay so they're the initial conditions, they're what we know without really having to do much calculation. So before we can figure out how far the ball moves in the x direction, so you know what is this x component of the motion, we're going to need to know its initial velocity in the x direction, which we've already worked out. So let's go to green pen here. We've already worked out its initial velocity in the x direction. Next thing we need to work out is how long that it moves in the x direction for. And how long it moves in the x direction for depends on how long it's in the air for, and that is governed by the y motion. So we're going to use the vertical motion to find its time, its airborne time, if you like. So equations of motion, we can write them down again, or the one we need. So y minus y naught is equal to v naught y times t plus a half a y times t squared. So how long? Is the ball going to be in the air for in terms of time? So y minus y naught, again, I'm just going to change the color for this. y minus y naught in this case is equal to 14.0 uh, meters. We have this already, so we know that the height of this roof here is 14 meters. So the ball falls 14 meters, that's equivalent to y minus y naught being 14 meters. So this is y and this is y naught. Very good. So we can fill in what we know there and if you've been doing projectile problems for a while, you know that we end up needing the, the quadratic formula here. So let's let's write out what we have first of all. So we have that, you know, if we fill in what we know about this equation, 14.0 meters on the left-hand side is equal to v naught y times t. So that's 4.50 meters per second times t plus a half a y, which is 9.8 meters per second squared uh, times t squared. Now, you know, we've got a t and a t squared here, which means that we're going to need the quadratic formula to solve this one. And if we use the quadratic formula, we get t is equal to 1 over 2 times, sorry, times 4.9 times minus 4.50. So this is just using the quadratic formulas that I'm sure you'll have seen before. 4.50 squared. So I'll just fill in all the numbers here without too much explanation. Whoops, sorry times 4.05t plus um, 4, oh sorry, no, I'm getting confused here a little bit. So 4.50 times, yeah, okay, excuse me there for a moment, 4 times 4.9 times minus 14. And again, I'm just sort of rushing through this a little bit um, to get us there, and this is going to be in seconds at the end. So this is what we get when we use the quadratic formula to try to work out what's going on. We get two roots, one of them is negative, one of them is positive. We can't have a negative time, obviously. So the answer we're looking for is 1.29 seconds. So that's the positive root of the quadratic formula in this case. So question, the, the part A of this question asked us how far away from the point where the, the ball rolls off the roof does it hit in the X direction. So now we need to analyze the X motion um, based on what we figured out. So in the x direction, x minus x naught now is going to be equal to v naught x times t plus a half a x now times t squared. So this is our analysis of the motion in the x direction. There's no a x acceleration, so there's no x component of the acceleration. So this thing, this part of the, the uh, equation disappears and we're left with now x uh, minus x naught is equal to 5.36 meters per second, which is the initial velocity in the x direction, times the time that the uh, snowball stays in the air for, which is 1.29 seconds. And that gives us a total of 6.91 meters. So it hits the ground 6.91 meters from the edge of the roof, basically. And that is how we do part A. Okay, so the next part of this problem then is to draw some graphs. So we're looking for the x component of the motion as a function of 
time. So let's, so this is going to be part B. So the x component as a function of time, so an xt graph, x versus t. <clears throat> so, you know, we're just looking for a sketch here. So x, you know, this is going to be zero. The x motion, there's no acceleration in the x direction, which means it's constant velocity, which means that our x versus time looks like this, just a straight line increasing. So the position is increasing linearly with a function of as a function of time, which is what we get for um, motion with no acceleration, constant velocity. Y versus t then, okay, so this is t, this is y. So we've set our y zero at the top of the building. We've got a motion that's depending on acceleration due to gravity. And if we look at the equation, we see that the position depends on t squared up here. So what we get is a, a graph that looks something like this. It's pretty straightforward. The third graph we're asked for is a vx as a function of t, vx as a function of t, which is constant. So, our, well, that should be a straight line, but uh, take my word for it. So the x component of the velocity is constant, as we said already, and the y component of the velocity increases linearly. So we've got constant acceleration, so the y component of the velocity increases linearly with time because of that constant acceleration. So that's part, uh, part b, pretty straightforward. Okay, so the last part of this question then asks us, will the snowball, if we go back up here, will the snowball hit this person here? So this person's height is 1.9 meters and they're standing uh, four meters away from, run out of space here, they're standing four meters away from the wall of the house or where the ball rolls off. So first of all, in order to solve that, we need to figure out how long it's gonna take the ball to move this distance in the X direction. So how long, is it going to take the ball to travel this four meters? And in that same time, how far is the ball going to, the snowball going to fall? So how far is the ball going to fall, first of all? Or sorry, you're going to travel in the x direction. So x minus x naught is equal to v naught x times t plus one half a x t squared. Again, we've got no x component here. So we can rearrange this and the time it taken to get there, to get out to where the person is standing in the x direction, is equal to x minus x naught over v naught x. x minus x naught is four meters, that's how far they're standing away from the uh, house or the wall. And then v naught x we calculated at the start of the problem as 5.36 meters per second. So that tells us that it's gonna take 0 0.746 uh, meters per second, sorry, uh, let me go back there, seconds for the ball to travel, the snowball to travel out to where the person is. So how far is it going to fall? So it started 14 meters up. How far is it going to fall in those um, 0.746 sec uh, seconds? So y minus y naught in this case, same equation again, just for the y component, v naught yt plus a half a y t squared. So when we fill in the numbers here, a y here in this case is acceleration due to gravity. The t is we're, we're going to plug in as 0.746 seconds, and v naught y we have uh, from above here as well is 4.5 meters per second. So when we plug in all those numbers, there's no trick here. Uh, we get um, what do we get? Uh, 7.9 meters. Is that correct? No, sorry. We get 6.08 meters. I was just getting ahead of myself there. So the ball has dropped 6.08 meters in that um, 0.746 seconds. So the height of the building was 14 meters initially, and then the ball has, fall, has fallen 6.08 meters. So that means that the uh, height above the ground at this moment, height above ground at x equals four meters is, uh, what is it? Is Let me just go back to my calculations here. It comes out to be uh, seven point nine. Right, so so round it, it comes out to be seven point nine meters. The man is one point nine meters tall. So snowball, the snowball is uh, passes by. I guess snowball passes by uh, six meters above his head. And I do believe, if we look back at the question that that is all that we're asked for in this one.